Employers can define sexual harassment and hold yearly staff workshops on what it is and what it's not, but unfortunately, sexual harassment, no matter how many policies and procedures, still erupts in the year 2011. Stephen Hammond works with businesses and organizations to help prevent harassment and human rights disasters. He wrote a book about it called Managing Human Rights at Work, and it is my pleasure to welcome Stephen Hammond back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Nice to see you again. Good to see you, Fanny. So, uh, sexual harassment, is there a legal definition? Yes. The Supreme Court decided it after a case that took place in Winnipeg almost 30 years ago, and it was in 1989. I think it was May 4th. And they actually said that sexual harassment is unwelcome conduct of a sexual nature that detrimentally affects the work environment or leads to adverse job-related consequences for the victims of harassment. Now, that's, that's the exact quote from mm -hmm. the case. But what it really means is that when you get unwelcome attention that you don't like, it doesn't have to be offensive. It just It's unwelcome, and it causes problems for you. Either you don't feel comfortable, let's say, being in the lunchroom when sexual jokes are being told, or more of the traditional stuff that we tend to think about on, you know, from movies and, and books and those kind of things, where someone's hitting on you and you aren't interested in that. And if you don't go along with it, you don't get the job, you don't get the promotion, you don't get the training that you want. So it, it's, it's very liberal, very expansive. And when, they, and when they came up with that definition, it hasn't been altered in Canada um, after all these years, after 22 years, which says that they really put a very liberal definition and it's grown. It's sort of grown to include a lot of things. When they came up with that definition, we also didn't have a social media world. No. Emails and tweets. Yeah. And, and, and what's interesting is the amount of, the amount, I saw it because you'd think that people would get that the WWW is in fact World Wide Web. And, and so when people put things on social media, of course, everyone gets to see it. And that's why people are getting in more trouble. And, and, and also where they're targeting individuals. If you, if you mm -hmm. send something on, on Facebook or put something, post something on Facebook or you send an email that has an, a negative impact on someone, it's like the whole world can see it. And, and so it's even more devastating for people. When you go in and train firefighters or police officers or uh, uh, office workers on sexual harassment, what it is, what it's not, what do you tell them? Well, actually, in male-dominated workplaces, which which I, I, has become a bit of a niche, uh, so people mm -hmm. tend to seek me out for that kind of stuff. It's it's interesting that men will often will just be rotten to anyone, um, men and women, and that's one of the things that actually comes out is that there's lots of times, especially when people have downtime, is that they will like men will sort of poke each other with a stick, you know, symbolic mm -hmm. stick, and the thing is that we're supposed to we're expected to take that. And a lot of guys aren't interested in that, so there's problems for them. And then also, then when they do to the women, and if the women aren't interested in taking that, then they fault the women for not being one of the guys, who because they, they can't take it. Well, the guys aren't any more interested in this, but they've sort of learned to just sort of take it or give it back. And some women have done that, but a lot of other women are saying, I'm not interested in this. But, but, but also, you got to remember that there's a certain element of men in male-dominated workplaces that are just not interested in seeing women in the workplace. And there's still only a few numbers. The difficulty is how much power and influence they have to shut the rest of them up so that they won't say anything, or as a matter of fact, they'll even mm -hmm. gang up and sort of work against the woman who the day before or the week before, they were fine with her. Uh, talking about power, if somebody is your boss and says, if you sleep with me <laughs> on the road trip, I'll give you a, a raise, or perhaps I'll give you a promotion, or something like that. Or well, that's blatant. Well, that is blatant, and and the other is, or that's how you'll keep your job. And uh, the, the book you that's reference. That's a little more serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and and the book you reference. The interesting thing is, you know, I start off one of the one of the chapters about sexual harassment with that very case of someone in British Columbia where, and this woman was very vulnerable and the boss knew it. Like her husband had lost his job so she was the sole supporter for the family and he says we're going on these road trips. And so anyone else you'd think would say like, you know, get lost. She didn't have, she didn't have the privilege to say get lost because she thought, my goodness, I've got the stability of my family at home. And, and when she eventually mm -hmm. did quit her job, she, they, they lost everything. They had to sell their insurance policy. They had to sell all kinds of stuff while she got better to go back and get another job. And who did she complain <laughs> to? Question two. Well, what you can do actually is, of course, if it's a small organization like hers, for example, you can't go anywhere because that's the owner <laughs> of the company. Right. But you can go to human rights. You can go to the Human Rights Commission in, in British Columbia. You can go to the Human Rights Tribunal, and you can actually um, file a complaint if you want. If 
you know, if you can, and, and there's support in an organization, then you go to them internally and you say, this is going on, how do we deal with this, because I want this to stop, and, and how do we make sure that um, I can get on with a decent workplace? Well, as you know, many women don't do it because they just don't want the reputation of being a whiner. If somebody calls you, hey, baby, in the elevator, it either bothers you or it doesn't. The real issue is what you consider unwelcome. Everybody's different. Well, everyone's different, but I would suggest that you can take at least 95% of the of the difficult conversations and and of the difficult conversation 95 percent of us are going to agree that that is wrong and mm -hmm. and so there might be sort of five percent that's that's on the fringe but that's where you actually just if you've got a good workplace you actually just say to the person look maybe you thought you're being funny or maybe you thought you're being cute but i just want you to know why i don't appreciate that or just say hey i don't appreciate sure. that and don't and, and do it again yeah yeah and, and the person will stop and and the interesting thing is when when people actually say something to an individual, most of the time they will stop. But it's our fear of those times where it doesn't stop and it gets worse mm -hmm. that, we, that we don't say anything. Well, recently we've been reading about the allegations from female RCMP officers, uh, three cases that I know of, and I'm sure there are more. Uh, you're working with somebody, you're on the job, and the harassment has caused you to uh, think of suicide, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome, quit your job. What to do? Well, <clears throat> luckily, the new commissioner, the very mm -hmm. first thing that he did uh, when he was sworn in is he said, we are going to address this. And as a matter of fact, he put someone, a deputy commissioner, in charge of the whole area. So they recognize that there's something wrong. They recognize that these, that it's not just you know, some flaky allegation that's being made. There's too many of these things. And also, we have to remember that in 2006, we had the largest award um, in Canada for this kind of activity, this kind of sexual harassment. And what it is is really bullying towards women, which gets into mm -hmm. that category of sexual harassment. Is that the case in Merit? The case in Merit. And, and this woman was on disability, and she was getting her, re her retirement pension, and the courts awarded her $950,000 over and above that, and that was upheld by British Columbia's Court of Appeal. So there's an example already where, where this has happened within Canada and within British Columbia. And so the RCMP are aware that some pretty horrendous stuff can go on. Again, to give, you know, to give any organization credit is that it's very few who are doing it. The difficulty is how the leadership allows it to go on. Because if the leadership for that detachment, for example, had just above this guy, Sergeant Smith was his name, if they had just said, you do that again, and you're going to be suspended or you're going to be fired, mm -hmm. my guess is Sergeant Smith would have backed down completely, and uh, maybe Nancy Saltz would still be an RCMP officer in merit. Uh, perhaps. Uh, one female officer uh, said she complained, and it was two years before head office or detachment or something, uh, addressed it. Yeah, I read that's that. A, as, that's a long time. Yeah, well, well you know, if, if it's the case, and, and um, Gary Mason, his columns, was showing this stuff, if yeah. it's the case, then that's, that's just wrong. I mean, that's, that's outrageous, and it's inexcusable. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, one of, the, one of the things that the RCMP can do is just to address stuff quickly. You know, and don't worry about all the politics. Don't worry about all the legalities. Mm -hmm. I know everyone worries about the legalities. And when I put on my lawyer's hat, I know you have to worry about that stuff. But if we spend just as much time on talking to someone and just say, what's going on and how do we resolve this, as opposed to worrying about the legalities, we'd be way ahead. Well, in the whole culture, when you look at the whole culture of any organization, there is a thread that runs through it. It's either cool to do it or not to do it. And uh, your peers will tell you that, well, if it's working. Yeah. The interesting thing is, um, I don't know if you've got the pictures on the monitor, but it was a number of years ago that um, Angela Merkel was, this was her first summit, and it was in Russia. So it was the first time that Russia joined, so it was the G8 summit. And when they're in this close proximity to what's going on, you see actually George Bush coming up behind her and trying to give her a back massage. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, and you can see that you know her her um, her shoulders are raised up, like right. get your hands off me. And he runs away actually afterwards. But it's one of these things that I often say to people, if that can happen at the highest level of political power, because she's the most powerful political governmental mm -hmm. leader as a woman in the whole world, and if that can happen at the highest reaches of the world power for women, sure. then there's a real good chance that some of that stuff is going on in your workplace. So what are you going to do about it? Well, a political figure, I, we, we all remember the pat that went across Canada when uh, John Turner patted Iona Campanola on the bottom. I wrote about that, as a matter of fact, in the book. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yes, well, because it was, you know, it was one of these... And they knew each other well. And, you and know, she had a dilemma, but she had difficult. she had a dilemma because while they were in the middle in the middle of a political campaign, 
She wants her leader to win and be successful mm -hmm. and to be reelected as prime minister, of which he wasn't. But she's also a feminist, and she wanted, you know, she had worked towards women equality for years. So she was going through this dilemma. So the very first time he did that, she didn't do anything. And then the next time she thought, I can't do it. So she pats him back on the bum. It explodes, and then yeah. yet it took him 21 days to apologize. 21 mm -hmm. days in the campaign. I know. I that was know. one of those examples. Don't wait. You know, apologize, move on, and, and say you've exactly. Done wrong. Exactly, and and leave it at that. Yeah, because yeah. if it doesn't have to go to a human rights tribunal no, 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 or, no. or to court, yeah. it's way better. It just yeah. is more efficient and it's better. Uh, back to. Uh, was it 1982 when you did the Diana, or you were studying the Diana Jansen case? Well, Diana Jansen, that's actually when it started, was in 1982. Uh, I met with Diana Jansen. She, she was at a restaurant in Winnipeg with another waitress right. in 1982, and they were horribly harassed by this cook. And then the owner, when they went to, went to the owner, Philip Anastasiadis, he didn't do anything about it. That goes through, she quits, the other woman was fired, Tracy Governor was fired. That goes through six and a half years of litigation, all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, so they finally came down with their decision in 1989. Um, I actually, I met with her a year ago, I just had lunch with her about a week and a half ago in Winnipeg, and uh, she showed me more of the documentation. We met with the lawyer, uh, you know, sort of had a casual get together with the lawyer that was involved in the whole case, and she did a 50 minute um, audio interview with me and if people actually go to my website, right on the home page, they'll be able to listen to it. And and uh, you know, I know I'm supposed to drive everyone to my website. The fact Why is, not? we we put no, well, we put it there, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we put it on the home page because this was so significant to hear from her what she went through. And there was things I've been in this business for 20 years now, and yet there was all these things that I hadn't even thought about mm -hmm. that she was going through, and it was just horrendous. And the difficulty is how often it's still going on today. If it is happening to you today. Uh, do you paper it, write it down, document it? How? Uh, yes. You, yes. You, you do those things. But here's the, here's the first thing you do if you can do it. You actually talk to the person who's giving you the trouble. If you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, then you go to someone within the organization. But it also could be a colleague. It could be, you know, in human resources, if you've got human resources. You know, there's a lot of small businesses that don't have mm -hmm. someone. But you go to someone and you say, this is happening to me and I want to deal with it. Lots of organizations don't always have the resources. So again, if they want to, they can go to my website and there's lots of free stuff that you can actually, on stephenhammond.ca, that you can actually um, you know, see some of the things that can help you in the process. But regardless, see what you can do if you can't do anything internally. Then you can always, I mean, you, at any time, you can always go to the Human Rights Tribunal in British mm -hmm. Columbia. But understand that if you can try to work it out, and I encourage people to try to work it out internally, then it makes it a lot easier. How often do people lie about this, women or men? But mostly it uh, would be women, I think, because it's yeah. mostly a male to female uh, situation. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going I'm to pull... To get at a boss, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll pull numbers. Career. I'll pull numbers just out of the hat. There's no substance to it. But I would suggest for every one person who lies, there's a thousand uh, women in particular, let's say, in sexual harassment, who put up with it and don't say anything. So the incidence is very, very small because you're scrutinized and everything you say or everything right. you've done is looked at. It, and, but we still to this day wrestle with, was that a flirtation? Is it just us having fun in the workplace right. or is that harassment? And when is it harassment and when is it not? Well, and you see, the thing is that even when someone just thinks that they are being innocent with their flirtation, they can still actually just say, look, I know that you were innocent about this, or I know that you were showing some interest in me, but mm -hmm. you can still just say, I'm not interested. And the good workplace is the one where the people know to back right off. Sure. I mean, Unless you're people, Ryan people... Kessler, don't send me a picture of you with your shirt off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, just kidding. Yes, of course, just kidding. And then, yes. you see, we can still have fun about sex, we can still have fun about sexuality, we can still have fun about gender, but it's where mm -hmm. across the line. And then you just have to be open, completely open, to recognize that if someone is not at all interested, then you've got to back off, apologize, or find some way to okay, resolve Okay, well, it. as you know so well, you and I have been talking about sexual harassment for 20 plus years, I know, maybe I know. 25. First on radio. First I know, on first radio. on radio. Remember we would get calls from people who, who said we were no fun yeah. and that it's just flirting and what was the world coming to? Oh, I know, I know. And, and, and you still get that today. You still get that where a lot of people think it's political correctness has gone too far. And what's mm -hmm. interesting is when you think that we get a brand new RCMP commissioner and the very first thing he's talking about is sexual harassment. So you right. know, you, you, and it's not just to pick on them. It's just you realize it hasn't gone away. It'll be very telling what Paulson does about this. Yes, it will telling. be. Yeah, and, and, and good luck to him because mm -hmm. it'll be wonderful to think that women are going to be encouraged to be RCMP officers. Good to see you again. Nice Daniel. to see you again.